Good afternoon and welcome to Fortress Press Live, where we connect you with the people and passions behind the books we publish here at Fortress Press. Our guest today is Lisa Grenison, and we'll be talking about the work she does behind the scenes as a development editor for Fortress Academic. Lisa, thanks for joining us for this episode of Fortress Press Live. Good to talk with you. Now, you work as a development editor for Fortress Academic. Talk to us a bit about what you do. What's a normal day in the life for you? I started at Fortress about two years ago and was hired in that role of development editor. Primarily, my role here is to work with manuscripts and with authors to develop our monographs and our textbooks to get them from sort of a raw manuscript into something that's ready to publish. My role has sort of expanded here to include also project management. So that means working with our copy editors and typesetters and anyone else we might hire to help turn that manuscript into an actual physical book or an ebook or some other form for publication. So I'm working constantly with our authors, but also with all sorts of other folks who do work for us with editing and typesetting to make our books the best they can be. Now tell us a bit about your background before coming to Fortress and talk about some of the things that drew you here. Before I came here, I was doing my master's degree here in St. Paul at Luther Seminary started at Fortress just after I finished that degree. So my interests are in theology and theological education, and the role here is a great fit for me. So it allows me to still have my feet in that world and to have some influence on the type of scholarship that's being produced and to be connected with folks who are doing teaching and doing writing in theological circles. But the job also sort of suits me well for my detail-oriented, color-coding, scheduling personality type. So it's a great fit for me, and that's really what drew me to the position. Well, thanks for sharing a bit about your background. Uh, I'd be curious to hear about a few of the recent projects uh, you've been working on and, and some things about them that you found particularly exciting or interesting. Yeah, so recently I've been working with an editor for us named Eric Barreto. He's editing a three-volume series as part of the larger Foundations for Learning product suite that we're coming out with. Just released this summer is Reading Theologically, the first of the three books edited by Barreto. And then forthcoming in January will be Thinking Theologically. And then sometime after that, we'll also release Writing Theologically. It's a three-volume series, reading, thinking, and writing, sort of the three key skill sets that a student would need in seminary. And so these are meant to be sort of preparatory volumes for seminary students or something that you would potentially read in your first few semesters at seminary. And they are not so much skill set books. They're not, here's how you construct a paper. Here's how you analyze a reading that you might look at. They're more around mindset, which is sort of a strange thing to wrap your head around, but it's helping students frame their thinking about what seminary education is meant to be, what they might hope to get out of that experience, and provide them some background that would help them sort of jump in feet first and get the most out of their experience. And the the books are edited by Eric Barreto, but each chapter is provided by a different contributor. And these are folks who are working all around the country and the world in theological education and seminary education with a variety of different backgrounds. Eric has done a great job of finding folks from diverse backgrounds and even, you know, being attentive to having women and people of color evenly distributed among the books. So um, he's done a great job of having a variety of perspectives, and it's been really enjoyable to work through the chapters with him and with the authors and to see the first book come out in print reading theologically. It's garnered some, some good attention and some excitement, so that's been great. Now, reading theologically is currently available. When will the second book in this part of the series be coming out? Thinking Theologically will be out January of 2015, and then sometime in 2016, I believe, we'll release Writing Theologically. Now, one of the other projects that we are creating a lot of buzz about, especially as we enter into the new school year, is our Inkling digital textbooks. And I know you had a huge hand in that project. So talk to us about Inkling, what it was like developing a digital textbook, and some of your thoughts on that, maybe from a project management perspective. Yeah, so working on the Inkling books was a totally new venture for us, and I was privileged to be a part of it from the very beginning when we were sort of just looking at the tool that the folks at Inkling had created and thinking about the potential that that might hold for us as a publisher. And it was really a ground-up project for us. We had to start from scratch. This is not something that we've worked on before, and an interactive textbook is a whole different animal from a typical print textbook. Some of the elements are the same, And certainly some of the skill sets that we needed in our writers were the same, a really deep knowledge of world religions or church history or the Bible, and a a sense of what is, is most helpful pedagogically for students. But the types of content that we were having folks create for us was 
really different. So find us a YouTube video that a student might want to link to as they're reading about this particular period in church history or this particular chapter of the Old Testament. Or find us a primary source online a student could go to or create a little pop tip nugget of information that'd be fun to click on to learn more. Um, So really different types of information. We worked with contributor teams of anywhere from two to 10 people on each book. And so they were collaborating with each other all around the country on Skype and, and on collaborative tools online. And they were bouncing ideas off of us. And it was great to be a part of that communication and to see how the teams really gelled with each other and motivated each other to create really great content. And then, of course, we had to work with a whole number, another team with some technical skills that we didn't have in-house here to help actually physically build these books. When you open an Inkling textbook on your tablet or on your laptop or on your smartphone, you'll see that there's all sorts of capability in there, whether that be a quiz that you can take right in the textbook or, like I've said, something you can link out to in the web or different interactive things that pop up. Maps and timelines are interactive in these books, so that was fun to create. So we had all sorts of hands in the bucket helping us create these books, and I think the four that we've come out with now are really fantastic texts, and I'm excited to see students use them in the fall semester and get some feedback. I think one of the really exciting aspects of breaking new ground, at least for us as a traditional print publisher, is it really sets us up for some exciting new horizons as we look to the future. I figure we can only expand and do more interesting things as we move forward. Yeah, I agree. This experiment in Inkling was a a great test for us, and I think it showed that we have both in-house and with our network of, of authors and contributors and tech gurus, we have a great network to tap into for these types of new projects. And I'm sure there'll be another innovative tool that comes along that we'll want to jump on. And it's good to know that we've got great people to work with that help us capitalize on that. Well, and to our listeners, uh, if you want some information on any of the books that we've mentioned today, I'll be sure to include links in the show notes for this episode. And as always, you can find information about all these books on our website, which you can find at fortresspress.com. Lisa, thanks so much for being generous with your time. And thanks for giving us some insight into the work you do here at Fortress Press. Yeah, thanks for having me. As episode two of Fortress Press Live comes to a close, let's finish things off with a brief message to our listeners. Again, many thanks for being a part of my conversation today with Lisa Grenison. To view the show notes for this episode or to leave a comment, head over to fplive.fortresspress.com forward slash 002. While you're there, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite content delivery network. Fortress Press Live is available via iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and even YouTube. Until next time, this is your host, Sean Tabbitt, signing off.